I was part of all the uh, national contact point projects with capacity building uh, activities and tasks. And I was also the Euraxis Bridget organization. <laughs> this uh, Euraxis cooperation thing. <laughs> so I was also the Euraxis coordinator for Cyprus for uh, nine years as well. Thanks, Matthew. Merci. Um, and I will speak to you today about quite a few things. And I have a short overlap with Tom in the beginning because I like to introduce Marie Skodowska reactions in a bit of my own way. I'll spend seven minutes on that. I'll spend another seven minutes on RISE, which is not the topic of today, but nonetheless I was asked to present a few things. And then when we come back to our other sessions, uh, I'll focus on individual fellowships and how to write proposals for it. Okay? So that's the overview of what, and what I'm showing you today. A bit on uh, Marie Curie in general, a bit on RISE, the content of the call in terms of eligibility and specific characteristics later on, but just for individual fellowships and then the how to write session with uh, a few things that I will surprise you with. And I don't have time for questions specifically at the end because I want you and I like you to interrupt me every time you don't feel I've spent uh, too much importance on something. So just raise your hand and, and tell me if you're Antonio, say that again or, or pose your question. I do not mind. I want this to be as interactive as possible and you need to stop me from speaking because I can go on and on and on. I need, I need your help in, in stopping me with, with questions. Okay, so, Marie Skodowska reactions in general. I'll run through the slides because you've seen quite a few things from, from Tom already. So I remind you, and Marie Skodowska reactions are in pillar one. And that makes sense of showing it to you why, because pillar one is about excellent science. So it doesn't focus on industrial, on, on boosting the industrial leadership of the uh, European Union as pillar two. It doesn't focus on addressing societal challenges as Pillar 3, but it focuses on the excellent science, the skills, and the career development of researchers like yourselves. This is a nice map I use. It, it has been produced by my Italian colleagues at APRE, Agencia per la Promozione della Ricerca Europea. So I present this to you because these slides are going to be available to you later on, but you, if I'm not mistaken. So most of the things that I refer to are good reference materials for you when you prepare your proposals on where you do your, your homework and your study back at the office. So I like this map a lot because it shows you all the programs of Horizon 2020 in a nutshell and then you can remember which you want to apply for. Marie Skodowski Reactions is a very good starting point usually, uh, as Tom uh, mentioned, and then you can focus on other collaborations or other issues from the other two pillars. As you've already seen, Marie's Kodowska reactions has been around for about 20 years. We celebrated our 20th anniversary this year, and you can see some of the achievements here. There's a connection here. It's not five Nobel Prize winners anymore, but it's eight Nobel Prize winners. So keep that in mind. And we celebrated the 100,000th fellow uh, this year. So like uh, Navarchitz uh, said, the commissioner, the net point would be you, and we want it to be you. Key features. You've seen this slide. Um, but I want to focus on, on some things. First of all, this is international, so it is for everyone. It does not have a, a, an age rule, neither biological age nor academic age. It is unlike the ERC, where you have three grants uh, being diversified by academic age, if you remember. No, not for here. So you can be an ex-rector of a university and get a Marie Curie Individual Fellowship. By the way, this is a secret example. Um, you can be a, a PhD uh, student who just received their PhD and who is eligible to submit. So no academic age and no biological age as a restriction. And of course, any nationality is welcome. Any nationality. Key features of Marie Curie actions. Mobility. Mobility is the key requirement. Okay? And th there's a whole philosophy behind academic mobility and uh, research mobility. Later on, I will show you uh, a link to your access, to the your access policy library, eh? and I will point you out to the charter and code, so the charter for the rights of researchers and the code of conduct for the recruitment of researchers. That is the epitome of support of mobility. So you can start looking it up already in the internet. That's uh, uh, also a nice place to find other policy documents about what uh, a researcher mobility is according to the European Union. So mobility is the key element that you, when you close your eyes and you think by the reactions, mobility is next to it. The other thing that is next to it is career development. 
Okay? So this is, a, a, especially individual fellowships, especially they call on individual fellowships, is a call that supports the boosting and the enhancement of the career perspectives of researchers. I know I just spoke Brussels English now, but this you should take a note. Career development, enhancement of the skill set of researchers to be more holistic scientists. All these things are things to keep in mind. They are the bottom and the, the, the basis of the philosophy of individual fellowships, but they are also things you should write in your proposal as well and prove to the evaluators that you address career development issues and boosting or enhancement of perspectives for career development of the particular research. Okay, which are the Marie Skłodowskiej reactions? There are four, as Tom mentioned. ITN is about, I'll just give you a, 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 a punchline, a phrase. ITN, PhD candidates, uh, mobile PhD candidates going around in consortium. Okay? Co -fund, this is co-funding uh, programs. It can be for uh, PhD candidates, but it can be also for postdocs. RISE it is the Research Innovative Staff Exchange Scheme. It is about exchanging staff uh, and, and researchers. Individual fellowships is the point of today. It is supporting basically postdocs in doing a competitive postdoc that will do what? Boost and enhance the career perspectives of a fellow while being supported for uh, top-notch research. Who can be the participants? Basically everyone. In all Marie reactions, you can have both academia and non-academia. In fact, because they were considered in, in the better part of this past 20 years, they were considered as mainly academic grants. What the European Commission did, especially during the past five years, is uh, reach out with a campaign to prove to non-academic organizations that they can also be part of uh, Marie reactions. And, and they are indeed. So especially within the RISE scheme, especially within the ITN scheme, you have a lot of non-academic institutions as well. Hint, hint. Also for individual fellowships, it is a good idea to have maybe a secondment in a non-academic institution. And I will explain my Brussels English later on during the day. Um, this is what uh, is being funded. I will not go into details because you see the numbers. I will only explain to you that funding and budgeting within Marie Curie Actions is based on a philosophy that the European Commission calls unit cost. So these numbers are multiplied by the person months involved in there. Good news is basically you don't have to prepare a budget because the budget is automatically prepared uh, by the system when you apply. I will explain briefly later specifically for individual fellowships. These numbers, by the way, are based on, the, um, on, on what Belgium and Luxembourg pay, which is considered the unit, the 100%. Uh, but then there's also country coefficients, okay? And you can find those in the, in the work program. How do you decide which molecular reaction is made for you? Well, as an individual researcher, you should know that basically there are two categories of researchers being funded based on experience. So if you do not have a PhD and you have less than four years of research experience, then you would be called an early stage researcher in the Brussels English of Marie Curie. If you have a PhD or you have at least four years of research experience, then in the Brussels English of Marie Curie you are called an experienced researcher. So if you are an early stage researcher, you can be funded through ITN, to do your PhD for example, or through RISE, to be exchanged in game experience, or through often, but I would not love that. If you're an experienced researcher, then you can be exchanged and gain experience through RISE and often, but most definitely the action that is made for you as a postdoctoral fellowship is the individual fellowships that I will further analyze later on. Now, if you're an organization, some of you here might be permanent staff members of, univer excuse me, of universities here. Um, if you're looking to host and recruit a one or several early stage researchers for a midterm project, then ITN is the thing that you should be looking for. If you're looking to recruit an experienced researcher, a postdoc for a short to medium term research project, then you should be focusing on individual fellowships and co -op. If you're looking to exchange information, to exchange administrative staff and or laboratory staff and or researcher, basically to use this as a first contact for other European projects, then maybe RISE is, is for you. 
Okay? So I gave you now an overview to how to choose, how to, to sieve through the information if you are an individual researcher, which Marie Curie action is for you, and if you are an organization or a representative organization, which Marie Curie action is for you. Now, very few things about RISE because I think I'm running out of time for this first session. So, RISE stands for Research and Innovation Staff Exchange. It is basically about transfer of knowledge, it is basically about exchanging stuff, hence the name. It has a very nice budget for this year, it has 80 million euros, so that means that it has a, a relatively okay success rate. Huh? The beneficiaries, so the partners receiving money from the Commission and signing the grant agreement, in Brussels English we call it beneficiaries, they can be only legal entities that are established in member states or associate countries. Remember these acronyms because I will use them quite frequently. MS is member state, AC is associate country. Okay? And the eligibility is for staff, regardless whether they're early stage researchers or experienced researchers or even administrative and managerial and technical staff. Okay? You can exchange those. It means that in the consortium you have, I don't know, a German um, university, an Italian university, and then a Japanese university. You can exchange not only research or scientists, but also uh, administrative and technical staff, like the head of the laboratory, or I don't know, even PhD students. Okay, so remember the slides before. The duration is four years. The duration of the project can be four years, with a maximum of 540 person months hmm, for each project. The secondment, so the exchanges, eh, can be anywhere between one to 12 months. And I know what some of you think, but I'm the head of the laboratory, I'm an associate professor, I can't spend one month away in, in Europe. Well, you can break it up to 15 and 15 days or whatever else. Okay, but the minimum is one month, the maximum is 12 months. You do want to send a PhD student away, but you don't want to send them for two years. Maybe you want to send them up to one year and then have them back to, to bring experience. And um, how you define who is a staff member? A staff member eligible to be exchanged is someone who has been in your organization for at least six months uh, before being exchanged, sent to a second. Okay? What are the eligibility conditions of consortia? You need at least three independent participants in three different countries, of which at least two of these countries are going to be either member states or associate countries. Okay? Uh, if the consortium is uh, all of member states or associate countries, you, then you need intersectoral uh, mobility. You need at least one academic and one academic. Okay? Mind you, secondments from a third country to a member state or associate country are not always eligible for EU funding. Okay? So if you are a Japanese organization here, you should keep that in mind. Huh? This is one of the uh, attention points on how to use the RISE uh, action. Right? EU funding is only for staff of the European partners in that, in that case. So I have a couple of slides here to diagrammatically show you uh, the minimum possible combinations of consortia. Okay, so you, if you have three member states, then you must have at least uh, different sectors. If the case is where you have at least two member states and then a third country, then the sector is not relevant. Huh? But you cannot exchange between uh, uh, institutions of the same country. All right. And then I think I leave the floor to someone else with you. If you have questions specifically about rice, I would like to take them during the coffee break, so we don't uh, we don't mess with the, with the following of, of uh, with the sequence of sessions now. Okay. I know it was just a small taste of rice. But I think it was valuable to, to present it to you anyhow. If you want further information, you will see also my, my emails and everything, and I can be available also at the coffee break for RISE. The rest of what I say today is going to be only about individual fellowships, which is our focus. It's, it's, it's already quite compact enough, because I should warn you, what I have included here for this, let's say, three hours combined or with other speakers, I usually deliver in one and a half days. So I usually do workshops of one and a half days of proposal writing with exercise. Of course, I'm, not, I'm trying to miniaturize here, so I've scaled down a few things, but there's a lot of information. Okay? And you will get the slides. You're free to take notes as well. You can photograph whatever you want, or you can interact. 
and but be patient a little bit with me because there's a lot of things uh, to say. So for this session, I will go through the individual fellowships call of 2017, which is now open, and I'll, I'll throw in an interactive uh, evaluation exercise, not in writing as I would have done in the one-day workshop, but I will do it on screen so at least you can interact uh, with me. I'll for follow my lead. Let's put it that way. You'll see. But before you do that, I just want to know how many of you here are representatives of universities. So you're a permanent staff at university. You're a professor, associate professor, or lecturer. Okay, one. Is there administrative staff from universities? Right. So research support offices, things like that. Okay. Then there's your access Japan over there. Okay, do we have uh, we have the national contact point uh, of Japan here. Anyone else from the national contact point? Over there, okay. And the rest of you are presumably researchers, yeah? So all of you researchers. But there's something for all of you in the presentation. Okay? There's at least one or two things that are useful for each and every one of you in the presentation. The presentation and the exercises are about what you're going to do, so your research objectives, and you know them better than me. How you're going to do it, and at least today I know that better than you. <laughs> it's the Marie Curie proposal technicalities. This is what I'll try to convey to you. But the most important thing that we tend to forget is why you're doing it. And I agree with Dr. Tanaka, it's not about the money. So it's not, the answer I'm looking here is, I want a prestigious European funded project. No, that's not the answer. I don't want to know your answer, but I want you, I want to invite you for two minutes to close your eyes and take some notes why you want to be involved in the process of a Marie Curie individual fellowship. It's going to be different for those of you who are permanent staff, different for those of you who are support staff of researchers, and different for researchers. So I'll just give you two minutes in silence. Think about it and take a note. I will not make you say it, but I do need you to think about the why. And the why is something deeper. It's not just the money. It's not just the European Fellowship. It's not just the prestige. And I promise I will tell you my why at the end. Question, guys. No, no, I don't want to say. Well, you don't, I don't want to I say it. Okay. I'm, I'm keeping time. Okay. Keep time. Huh. By the way, this is the Golden Circle concept by Simon Sinek. It's not mine. I stole it because I like it too much, but I always give credit. For those of you who don't know Simon Sinek, Google him up, YouTube him up, and you will see some quite interesting talks. But you still have one minute and 35 seconds. Uh, 30 seconds. some truths to realize before starting the whole thing. The proposal is not just a paper and an article for a journal. I know the word just is not proper because preparing a, an article for a journal and paper is a lot of work. I know, I've published myself. But the point being here, the process is difficult. So it's not just about writing science, huh? but it is also a marketing pitch, if you want, a sales pitch of your research and of the career development of yourself, 
to convince the evaluators in the European Commission that you are worth this money. So keep in mind that there is a lot of particular language, jargon, structure, templates, processes. Hmm? I call them all Brussels English, huh? and you will see the difference at some point. And also keep in mind that there is a lot of particular policy mandates and backgrounds that you need to address, or at least that you need to understand. Huh? So I will spend a few slides on telling you what the policy background and mandate is for individual fellowships. Why? Because if you understand the basic philosophy on which the call was built, then you are more probable to address those issues more properly. And this is all aside from the science that you know better anyway. Another major thing to understand, this is competitive calls for proposals, not subsidies. There's other European mechanisms that subsidize, not of interest to you. What is of interest to you, which is the IF, is competitive. Okay, so you need to showcase how you are better than the competition both in terms of science and in terms of addressing all those policy background issues that I will mention. The Commission publishes the call, so there's a lot of Brussels English involved, and you need to address that. But the evaluation is being done by scientists like yourself from your field of science. So you need to convince both audiences. So you need to strike a balance, this is what Katia mentioned earlier today, for those who are here. You need to write both for the specialist and the generalist both for the scientist and the commission uh, and say bureaucracy if you want to, to say it like that and the commission jargon, the commission language. You also need to showcase European added value. So it's not just about one country. I go to Switzerland, I go to France, I go to Italy, I go to where, and it's about that country. It's not about innovation and competitiveness of one country or one, or one region. What you're going to suggest has to be of European added value. This is a European grant, remember. Okay? Now, the discussion of what European added value is can start now and we can finish in two days and we will still not have decided what European added value is. It's one of those questions. What is life? What is law? What is science? What is innovation? What is European added value? Those kinds of questions don't have answers. But because I did receive a lot of questions in my past nine years in the business. Okay, Antonio, what is European added value? And I definitely don't like to say I don't know, um, because I like to show up. So <laughs> what I did is I went and, and studied as many documents as possible from the European Commission. And I think I have found these three bullet points that sort of describe what European added value is. And by the way, this is not my understanding of it, but I have down there a couple of URLs. Um, where I got these things uh, from. So these are European documents. You can see this is the report of DGRTD. DGRTD is the General Directorate of the European Commission for Research and Technology. So they might have an idea of what European added value in science and research is. And that's the URL. And then I also have a document there by the Strategic Forum for International Science and Technology Cooperation. So they might even have an idea what added value is for Europe. Bottom line, why am I suggesting this to you? To understand the notion of European added value, you have to do some reading. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should... These together are about 800 pages, so I, I don't suggest that you should just download and read 800 pages, but at least browse through. Pick up the points of what European added value as a concept could be, so that you can sell it, sorry for the verb, so that you can present it in your proposal vis-a-vis -vis what you're doing as a science. So your scientific topic, your thing that you're going to propose, how does it reflect on your career and how does it sell on European added value? Okay, this is why I have a slide here. Clear? If it's not clear, you can tell. Other basic policy background. Now you might think I'm wasting my time on policy issues, but I'm not. <coughs> because it is important for you to understand on what things has the individual fellowships call been built? This is on what it is built. This is a policy skeleton, backbone, background, whatever you want to call it, of Marie Curie actions. Marie Curie actions come out of the Innovation Union. By the way, Innovation Union is a document that it is one of the seven flagship initiatives 
Ah, but when I speak Brussels English, my mouth becomes different. So one of the seven flagship initiatives of the Europe 2020 strategy. Now these things you should take note. These are, these are nice words, eh? these are nice titles. Europe 2020 strategy is a big thing, big policy document. Under it, you have seven flagship initiatives, digital agenda, youth on the move, they have various titles. Innovation Union is the flagship initiative, so the strategic document on which Horizon 2020 was built. Actually, in the European Commission, we like to say that Horizon 2020 is the implementation of the Innovation Union strategy. And this is some of the bullet points that the Innovation Union contains. So why am I presenting this to you? In your proposal, it is a nice touch to showcase how you are addressing some of the topics of the Innovation Union. Do it in style. Eh? Do it with tact. For example, when you tell them that you are addressing gender issues, uh, in your proposal, because perhaps you are a female researcher, it's a nice touch to put comma as Innovation Union states in chapter X, Y, Z. That's a nice thing to. Yes, you're pointing out. Yeah, I'll come to that. Thank you. I'll come to that. And it's a nice touch to showcase that yes, I've been reading those documents and I know a couple of things from in there. ERA, thank you very much. European Research Area. Now. The European Research Area is a nice experiment. You have to showcase, if possible, how you are integrating in the European Research Area, how you are assisting through your proposal, how you are showcasing with your proposal that the European Research Area exists. All these things you have to check out, to browse through them, to really understand what the philosophy of individual fellowships is. Agenda for new skills and jobs. By the way, there is a new agenda for skills and jobs since June 2016. It's about skills necessary in the modern day employment environment and particularly the modern day research employment environment. Nice thing to know. Because when in, the sec in your proposal, in the section about career development and training, guess what? You are describing skills that you're getting. So guess what? It's a nice thing to see what the agenda for your skills and jobs is. So that you can showcase some of those skills in there. That the fellowship will provide you the opportunity to Game to do what to further enhance your career, etc. etc. So, this is how things are interconnected. You start seeing it a little bit. Basic concept modern triangle of knowledge research coupled with business coupled with education. Another basic concept for Marie Curie the triple I dimension. Mm -hmm. So, internationality, intersectorality, interdisciplinarity. The more of those three I's you have in your proposal, the better it is. There's no recipe. I cannot tell you you just put 20% of that, 30%, and then a, a couple of kilograms of the last one. No, it doesn't work that way. But the more you showcase the triple I dimension in your proposal, the better it is. Big parenthesis. These things that I'm saying now are worth it for all European programs under Horizon 2020, not just Marie Curie's. Okay, so they're nice couple of slides. I close the parenthesis. Yes, please. By intersector, you mean both academic and industry related? So, if it is academic, then I, I would like to see the non-academic element. If it is public, then I would like to see the private element. So, inter-sectors, between sectors. Obviously, the Marie Curie Individual Fellowship is mostly academics. So, we would like to see notions of intersectorality in terms of how do you involve the non-academic sector. Hint, hint through a secondment, for example, in a non academic institution. Uh, since you go to university, it's a good thing you go, and I use the word this because you have mobility to a university. Uh, it's a good thing to show that for a month, for example, or a couple of months, you are doing a secondment in a private company of the field. Now, you will tell me some fields don't have private companies involved to share, but then there's also the public. So maybe you could go to a government department, whatever. Bottom line. Show